two Republican lawmakers have been suspended from social media. Yesterday, YouTube removed a video and suspended the account of Senator Rand Paul for violating its policy on COVID misinformation. And Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has been suspended from Twitter, again, for violating the platform's misinformation policy with inaccurate COVID information. Her vaccine comments mark her fourth strike on the site, and a fifth could mean she's out for good. So what do you make of this, Kim? I mean, first, the pr former president of the United States is banned from Twitter. Now we have a sitting U.S. senator and sitting House member being barred. What's your take? Well, after kind of looking at what Marjorie Taylor Greene said and also what Rand Paul said, I mean, listen, a lot of people are agreeing with them. A lot of people are thinking what they're saying out loud. And if these big media companies, if social media doesn't like what they're saying, then rather than silencing them and silencing many Americans who agree with them, they need to be countering what they're saying with different information. If they've got the science, then they need to present the science. But just silencing people is not exactly uh, getting people, other people who are seeing that to say, oh, well, I guess they must have absolutely been wrong. I don't know, Ryan, what do you think? I, mean, I don't think it uh, matters what they said. I don't, I don't think that sitting uh, senators and sitting House members should be censored by private corporations on, on, the, on these major platforms. I think if voters want to throw them out of office, they, they, they can and they should do that. But if voters don't know what their actual attitudes are, what their positions are, then it's harder for them to cast an informed vote at, at the ballot box. So, yeah, I, I, just, I just don't see any, any justification from a Democratic stance for this. Now, the, the particular arguments that, that they were making, I don't necessarily think are, are going to be uh, penetrated by science. You know, th so, uh, they, I think what Rand Paul was saying, that cloth masks don't work, that's not true, but I don't think he cares. Uh, I think M Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, said something similar, that, that the vaccine doesn't work to slow the spread or something. That's, that's just obviously not true. Uh, but I don't think she cares, and there's no amount, you know, the, she has set up an, eco, an, an ideological, you know, ecosystem, epistemological ecosystem that says that anything that disagrees with what I say is untrustworthy. I don't trust the CDC. I don't trust these institutions. And so you can't, therefore, give her any information that will, that will change her mind. And the more you argue with her, probably the more she, more she digs in. There's a lot of social science research on, on that. Uh, you know, but look, Twitter in the past has, has you know, provided links to accurate information for viewers, and I think that's a much more appropriate uh, response than just uh, trying to kick people off of social media. Well, yes, and I think Kim makes a very good point. The best way to counter misinformation is with actual compelling information. Now, I agree Marjorie Taylor Greene's not going to be changing her mind on some of her wild viewpoints, but she is putting them out there to a massive audience that follows her. There's tremendous value, actually, in allowing what she says to stay out there so it can be corrected by credible information. You know, I've been a big critic of Marjorie Taylor Greene since she first came into office. She, you know, made the ridiculous claims that 9-11 was more or less a hoax, um, asking about, you know, raising questions about planes flying into the Pentagon. But I pushed back on that, and it became a news story that I would hope helped inform some of the people who may follow her who didn't know better. So, I mean, I think everyone on the, you know, in this panel agrees, of course, big tech censorship is not something that we can get behind. But more importantly, just stopping the free flow of ideas and just silencing it, it actually feeds into this notion that, you know, the powers that be are working against us. And I actually think it fuels some of the conspiracy theories that she believes when she is blocked. And the, the Rand Paul one just seems very ridiculous. I mean, he's, he is a doctor. Um, I be believe he's um, an ophthalmologist, but um, not even something that I would say would be um, far out of the realm of something that a doctor could raise and an opinion that he's entitled to, but then just push back with facts. That seems to be the simplest answer. Yeah, I mean, one of the things to to kind of bring up is that not only is big tech censorship, you know, it's not up to them to be the arbitrators of truth. And we know that they have gotten it wrong many, many, many times. So, you know, one time they say, oh, this is a conspiracy theory. And then the next, it's suddenly not a conspiracy theory. So I think also what's really important is just to understand that when these, when uh, Paul, Rand Paul is talking, when Marjorie Taylor Greene's talking and others like them, there are millions of people who actually do agree with them. And it, it is important. I think rather than there's other ways to censor rather than actually 
actually physically censor the way that Twitter is doing. But another censorship sort of method is just discrediting the other person or saying, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory or that's just not true. And I think that everybody needs to do better on that instead of just pointing fingers and saying you're a conspiracy theorist and that isn't true, like present the actual science. And yeah, you're right, Ryan, maybe you're not going to change Rand Paul's mind. Maybe you're not going to change Marjorie Taylor Greene's mind. But to Alyssa's point, definitely would change maybe the minds of people that are, are reading you know, the actual information you're putting out there. Or maybe maybe it won't, because maybe maybe there isn't a lot of good counter information. And that also has to be uh, you know, taken into consideration as a possibility. Yeah, I think attitudes around this fluctuate. I mean, if, if, if somebody believes that the vaccine just simply doesn't work and, and they're impenetrable to any evidence, they're probably going to be you know, stuck in that position. But that is a, a, a vanishing minority position. You know, I think what you, what you saw over the last couple of months was, was instructive. And a significant number of people, I think, believed that the vaccine worked, but they also were hoping that COVID would just kind of go away because everybody else was going to take the vaccine and that whatever then uh, risks or side effects were associated with the vaccine could be then suffered by those other people and then they could kind of free ride on, on herd immunity. But then as cases started ticking back up and you see these different variants uh, you know, pushing, pushing through and particularly pushing through the unvaccinated community, you did then start to see a record uptake in in the vaccine people saying well well i guess guess that didn't work i guess i'm actually going to have to put myself out there and and get this jab in my arm so i think there 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 is a lot of uh, hesitancy there was a lot of hesitancy ar ar around it but the reality did start to intervene on it yeah, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. I do think that we have an era, especially in the House of Representatives, where you've got folks who are elected who seem more interested in their social media followings, their potential, you know, cable news contributorships down the road, um, rather than actual governing. And what was what was extremely wrong, aside the, the facts aside from Marjorie Taylor Greene's tweet, was she was saying the FDA shouldn't approve a life-saving vaccine that's already saved, you know, or, or inoculated 100 million plus. Americans. So, I mean, I don't want to gloss over how ridiculous what she was advocating for was. But I think that, again, she's entitled to those viewpoints. But you do need a counter effort to say why that is absolutely ridiculous, why this is not a credible person. And with the actual facts, not simply, you know, calling her a conspiracy theorist, just going through the data of why she's wrong. But she has no, no right as an elected member of Congress to be saying that we should halt the vaccine based on no science, scientific backing. I mean, she is a voice of the people. I mean, that's what a congressional and that's what members of Congress are. Right. So they're not supposed to, you know, I this is the one thing that really drives me crazy is this. Sometimes there's this narrative out there of like who's qualified or who isn't qualified to be in Congress. And everybody is qualified to be a member of Congress. Everybody is qualified. It's supposed to be the body that represents the people. Right. So, I mean, I think she is actually representative of quite a few uh, you know, a lot of the people that are out there, and I think she's just voicing what a lot of people in her district, her constituents and people of America are thinking. So I do think it's really important that rather than silencing, and I think we all agree on this, that rather than silencing, you know, it is better to counter with actual uh, real information. But, you know, the, the information, I think what is, again, what I think the officials should be kind of expounding upon is the fact that Everything at this point in regards to the virus, in regards to the pandemic, everything really is still very inconclusive. You know, we're still in the middle of it. We don't know what's next. I mean, we keep trying and, and it's good to try. We should keep trying, but we don't know. Let me make one quick and then I'll throw it to Ryan. But I, I, I see your point, Kim, but I would say, you know, everyone is entitled to the, their own opinion. They are not entitled to their own facts. That's where the difference is with Marjorie Taylor Greene. She has every right to have whatever opinion she wants. That does not make them valid. It does not make them credible and it does not make them true. But Ryan, you were going to say? I would just say that, uh, yeah, for sure. Somebody who is elected to Congress is, is by definition qualified to be in Congress by the fact that their district elected her. I, th I think there's a good chance her district you know, throws her out in, in the next election. But I also think it's a bit of a cop out to say that everything is inconclusive. No, that, that's, that's not actually right. Like you, you can draw some 
conclusions so far, you know, uh, from from the data, and that's what and that's what scientists have been doing throughout this pandemic. One of the conclusions that they've been able to draw conclusively is that if you are vaccinated, you have a you know ninety plus percent uh, less chance of of getting se you know severely sick or uh, hospitalized or or dying from catching uh, COVID, and that it also does reduce the spread of the virus. Like that, there is enough data globally to say that that is a fact. You know, so it's it's not quite fair to say that. Well, you know, everything's kind of vague, and who knows, and anything could be possible. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get into a fight about it, guys. But you know, there is definitely there's definitely. Uh, countering information that is out there Iceland, isn't, for example. I, 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 yeah, but there then, then present the information. We could, hey, listen, we could do a whole segment on this at some point. It would be <laughs> excellent. Yeah, I mean, and, and for sure, I mean, the data is, you know, there, I, I just think that right now and what we've seen, and I kind of to Marjorie Taylor Greene's point, and I hate to defend her because, you know, I don't really agree with her on a lot of stuff, but to her point of, you know, we have tried numerous things. We've tried lockdowns. We did try masking. We've tried, we're trying the vaccine now. You know, we've tried a lot of things. And and a lot of promises have been broken to the American people, and that has been that this will stop the spread, that this will end the pandemic, and that just hasn't happened. So it is leaving a lot of people with a lot of questions on, you know, well, these if, definitive I mean, if anybody, statements. If anybody thought it was going to straight up, you know, putting on a mask is going to straight up end the pandemic, or or even getting vaccinated is going to straight up end the pandemic, you know, they were they were expecting way, way too much, and then to say, well, it didn't it didn't end the pandemic. You know, it's Monday right. morning, and the pandemic's still here. I guess none of this works. Well, and I mean, I think the simplest thing, and of course, this is a novel pathogen, we can't compare it to anything previously, but polio, for example, we've more or less gotten rid of it, though we, you know, projections are it won't actually be gone until about 20, 10, uh, 2030. But if we had had, you know, 85% of Americans get fully vaxxed and we are having this conversation and we still had major variants and massive spread, then I think it would be worth saying how effective is this. But there's been a major lag because of vaccine hesitancy. I think it's, it seems weird to me to throw out the efficacy of the vaccine when half the country still isn't vaccinated. Right. It's like the but people, the people who countries. are dying are not vaccinated. And so then you're pointing right. at the people that are still dying and saying, well, well that, I guess the vaccine doesn't work. Well, maybe they could yeah. have tried the vaccine. Well, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that the vaccine definitely does help with the severity of the symptoms and people that are high risk really go. should absolutely uh, consider that. But there is data out there. I mean, the latest is coming from Iceland that is nearly fully vaccinated and still seeing a lot of spread. Now you can't get into Iceland as of last week or two weeks ago, even if you're fully vaccinated without having tested negative for the virus because they're still seeing massive spread amongst their vaccinated community. So we I think need, there's a lot of yeah. data out there. You know, right, you would but, need a right. bit more nuance on that one, though, because, again, I believe they have a different vaccine than we're predominantly using in the U.S. that isn't as effective. But with that, more rising after this.